Good morning. Good morning, and welcome to Trinity Reformed United Church of Christ, where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. I want to thank you for joining us here in person as well as online, and hope that you are truly fed by the worship of our God this day. We are continuing uh, to conduct full in-person worship along with our live streaming while practicing social distancing, and currently we are masking. However, uh, because the infection rates are on the decline in the Northeast and are under 1% in Columbia County, I'd like you to uh, consider us joining us here in person, especially if you are vaccinated. Uh, I've asked the constituency to immediately remove the mask mandate, making masking optional due to the low infection rate. And we are also planning to begin fellowship time and Sunday school for the Lenten season beginning March 6th. So we're coming back to uh, fellowship time in, in Sunday school. So after service on March 6th, we'll actually be get, getting together over in Jubilee Hall and having our coffee and, and uh, refreshments. So we'll get back together once again. Uh, we've been away from each other for way too long, and we all need to be together once again. But if you are unvaccinated, we would ask that you would continue wearing a mask to protect our unvaccinated children and those who have immune compromised health conditions. So if you're unvaccinated, we would ask you to continue wearing your mask. And if anybody feels better wearing a mask, you may certainly do so knowing that you are supported in your decision by all of us. Um, I'm gonna be wearing a mask when I, when I uh, mingle around with people in the beginning of service and after service. And that's kind of what we would like you to do as well is when you're up and about mingling, wear your mask, when you sit down, if you're comfortable and want to take your mask off, you can. It's very difficult for the liturgists to be able to see what they're reading when they have glasses because they fog up all the time. So we're happy to be back and uh, we're going to be very careful with our social distancing and masking. All right, for those of you who are not aware, Rona, our church office manager, is retiring and we have hired a new office manager with considerable experience in office management, finance, and computers. And we hope that you'll stop in and say hello to Lisa Hill as she trains with Rona. She'll, begin, she'll be starting this Tuesday, in fact. Also wanna remind everyone about the High Five for Disaster Relief. We are asking every member of a church in the Penn Northeast Conference and the Pennsylvania Southeast Conference to donate $5 for our joint disaster relief efforts. Our hope is to raise $5,000 to be used for the two conferences when disaster strikes. Uh, and you can put your envelope in a, uh, you can put your donation into a separate uh, envelope and just mark it disaster relief. And of course, your help with this is greatly appreciated by the Susquehanna Area Mission Council. 
Uh, the, outreach and inter, uh, the Outreach and Intentional Caring Committees are asking that if anyone has unused Christmas cards that they would be willing to donate, these committees have a special project in mind and would appreciate your help. There's a box out in the narthex that you can just bring them in and put your Christmas card, your old Christmas cards there. When I say old, unused. We are once again uh, actively collecting for the food pantry. Uh, items can be left at the table in the front of the crying room at the rear of the sanctuary. Uh, many have been adversely affected by this pandemic and could certainly use our help to get back on their feet or supplement their fixed income with food that we provide. So please consider dropping off some non-perishable food for those less fortunate than ourselves. As part of our Bible study series, I will be sending out the materials that relate to this week's gospel lesson in Luke. If anyone else would like to be added to the email list, please send me an email or text me or just give Rona a call during office hours and we'll get you on the list. Grocery cards continue to be sold. They'll be sold after service today out in the narthex. You can, and uh, for those online, you can call the church office for either Weiss or Giant cards, and you can pick up here at the church, or we can even deliver them to you. Cards uh, will be, like I said, on sale in the narthex after service. And this is an amazing fundraiser that we do some wonderful things uh, with mission outreach uh, here at the church So and for our community. So really a very important fundraiser. We really thank you for your help. And of course, if you know somebody who needs assistance, you know somebody out there who just needs someone to come, you know, give them a phone call, visit them, or go and visit them in person just to lift their spirits, or they need uh, errands run or something of that nature, please give us a call. The visitation team is more than ready uh, and willing to lift their spirits to those who need it. And as I remind you each and every week, please be careful. Continue to social distance. Wear a mask when you're around large crowds or in confined spaces. Cough or sneeze into your elbow. Wash your hands frequently. Get your vaccine as well as your booster, because this is a wonderful way of, to show your love of neighbor by, and yourself by getting your vaccine. At this time, I'm going to ask our consistory president, Greg Hine, to come forward. He has a little message that he would like to convey from the finance team. Good morning, everyone. Um, happy February 6th in this blessed day. Um, on behalf of the Finance Committee, um, with the great news of us opening the church back fully for March 6th, um, the giving has been down tremendously, about half of what it used to be even during the pandemic. Um, so we're asking everybody to come back in. Let's fill the pews. Let's fill Jubilee Hall with fellowship time and come all together again. We will still be doing online, online services as always going forward, but we wanna fill the pews here again. We want to give to the church as much as you can so we can stay an active church in the community for um, very many, many years to come. So I look forward to seeing everybody March 6th, back in Jubilee Hall, back in the Sunday school rooms. And please, if you're able, Please give more if you can, so we can give back to more to the community with the help of your funds. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Our finance team has been doing a wonderful job of making sure that being extremely good stewards with our money. So we wanna thank them for that. And of course, we always wanna make sure that we have appropriate funds to do the mission work that we need to do. And finally, as we prepare for worship, I want you once again to take two big deep breaths in and slowly release them, emptying your mind of anything that would distract you from realizing God's presence and God's Holy Spirit during this time of worship. So let us now experience God's Spirit by singing our choral call to worship, Give Thanks. <clears throat>
Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship found on the walls and on your screens. Holy, holy, holy is the God of hosts. The whole earth is full of God's glory. Our hearts are filled with thanks, O God. We bring before you our songs of praise. All rulers of the people are called to praise God. All people of the earth are subject to God's voice. The steadfast love of God surrounds us here. We have come to see and hear and understand. Let the threshold shake with the power of God's voice. Let all the people tremble before God's glory. God's purposes endure and will be fulfilled. Our lives can be channels for God's grace. Our opening hymn called as partners in Christ's service on the walls and on the screens. Please join me in the opening prayer found on the walls and on your screens. O oh God, whose presence fills this place of gathering, we bow before your majesty in awe and wonder. When we consider the vast universe of your dominion, we are humbled by your attention to us. Your steadfast love and faithfulness amaze us. Your care for the holy gives us a sense of our own dignity and worth. Send your gospel to teach us, to save us from ourselves, to lead us into all truth. Show us the tasks we can accomplish for you and grant us the courage to reach out in your name to do them. Amen. Please be seated. Oops. Just lost my Sorry about that. <clears throat> the voice of God shakes the deficient foundations on which we have built our lives. We are summoned to account for our faithlessness. Called as disciples and apostles, 
we have not followed in the footsteps of Jesus or led others to the grace of God. Let us remind ourselves of God's sovereignty and confess our broken commitments by reciting the prayer of confession found on the walls and on your screens. Awesome God, we are afraid to admit the many ways we have failed you. We are sinful people who forget to thank you and who delay consulting with you about decisions we must make. We prefer the safety of familiar programs, even when they are ineffective. We cling to our routines, even when they cause us to lose sight of your purposes. We are people of unclean lips, dwelling among people who deny your presence and power. Oh God, we fall down before you, seeking forgiveness. Amen. Now let us confess our personal sins in silence. Lord, hear our prayers. <clears throat> Stand up, people of God. Our creator reaches out to lift us up and deliver us from the trouble around us and the distress within. God touches our lips to cleanse us and to take away our sins. By the grace of God, Christ comes to us, reclaiming us, showing us a new way, empowering us for effective service. seated. And children, kids, young adults, come on up. All right. How you all doing? What you got on your sweater? You got a raccoon. <laughs> All right, got a question for you. Yes. Thank you very much. Yes, helps if I turn it on. Thank you, Greg. See, my consistory president keeps me on, on track here. All right. Have any of you ever put together a model or maybe a Lego set? Uh -huh, yeah, I knew the Lego set. Well, now, how do you know how to put them together? Are there instructions that come with it? Okay, so there's instructions to tell you how to put everything together, right? And if you follow all the instructions, hopefully you'll complete your project. Now, what's the last, what's the last Lego set you guys put together? The Harry Potter one? Might've been, okay, I thought so. All right, well, very good. Well, you know, in our gospel lesson today, uh, Jesus gives Peter instructions to cast out their fishing nets out to catch some fish. But Peter's kind of hesitant. He's like, we've been out all night and we haven't caught a thing. But Peter went ahead and cast out his nest just as Jesus told him to do. He followed his instructions. And sure enough, they caught so many fish that the nets started to break and they had to call for another boat to come in just to help them get the fish ashore. Now, that's what happens when we follow Jesus' teachings and Jesus' instructions for our lives. We learn how to avoid trouble, and we actually learn how to be more loving toward all people, all people, no, no, ex no exclusions. We, be, we love everyone, right? We treat everybody with dignity and respect, that's right, and love and care. And that's exactly what we do. And that's my challenge for you. I want you to follow Jesus' instructions. Now, does anybody here know what those instructions were? What does Jesus teach us to do? He teaches us to be what? Kind and loving to our neighbors, yep. And kind to others, take care of, treat others the way we want to be treated, right? Now, Victor, do you want to be treated bad by other people or treated well? 
Well, that's right. That's right. That's right. And so then we must treat people the way we want to be treated, right? We got to treat them well too. And that's what we do by following Jesus' teachings. So do you think you can do that? I bet you can. Let's pray. Teaching God, you help us to understand what Jesus taught so that we can be loving toward others and avoid trouble in our lives. Open our hearts and our minds to treat others the way we would want to be treated. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you all for coming up. Appreciate it. Thank you, Jane. And now we will have special music by Rachel Troychuk. Uh-huh. 
Forgot my capo in the fellowship hall, so <laughs> that was in the wrong key. But enjoy my growling. Thank you very much. <laughs> Next time I'll do the more. Our epistle lesson for this morning is from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verses 1 through 11. Paul, though confessing his own weakness, exhorts Christians to hold fast to the gospel because of the saying, saving power of Jesus Christ, who proved he was the Son of God by rising from the dead, beginning in verse 1. Now I should remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as if first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, Last of all, as to someone untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and this grace towards me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, through, though it was not I but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we pro proclaim, and so you have come to believe. Here ends our first reading. Our gospel lesson is from the book of Luke, chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Peter, suddenly recognizing the power of Jesus, can only fall to his knees and confess his sinfulness. Yet Jesus chooses him to be an apostle, beginning in verse 1. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Genesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, and the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put it out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked all night long, but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. When Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. Blessed are those who hear the word of our God and believe. Let us pray. Surprising God, 
Just when we think you've forgotten us, we see your presence in the small, in the smile of a small child. Just when we need you most, you appear with gifts so gracious we can't understand them. Help us to open our eyes and our hearts and our minds to your surprising gifts as we pray that the meditations of our hearts and the words of my mouth might be pleasing and acceptable to you this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The writer of Luke introduces a new concept in our scripture this morning. He broadens Jesus' ministry from that of a lone ranger to a model of discipleship for a community of sinners. The writer of Luke uses Mark's account of the calling of Simon Peter, his brother Andrew, and the sons of Zebedee, with the miraculous catch of fish by Simon Peter and the other disciples. This is all done to set the flow for Jesus' proclamations that this proclamation that disciples will fish for people, or as Luke puts it, catching people. In fact, Luke's uh, phrase can be translated captured alive or restored to life in the Greek. Altogether, these verses introduce Simon Peter as the sinner disciple, which sets a model for discipleship of a community of sinners for the church. And this is good news for us today, because we are sinners. We make mistakes. We're not perfect. And truth be told, most of us don't feel real worthy of God's love sometimes, let alone God's forgiveness. But this is exactly why Jesus' ministry of forgiveness and eternal life is so important. Luke lets us know that Jesus' ministry is for the community of sinners that, that are to follow him and to be one of his disciples, which makes it very plain and clear that even as a sinner, we are more than welcome into the family of faith. This is also why for Luke, it is vital that as disciples, we share what we have with others. Luke doesn't prescribe poverty for his disciples, but rather sharing of our blessings. Just as Jesus shares with the disciples a miraculous catch of fish, so much fish that Simon Peter has to have another boat come out and help him. This example of radical hospitality and abundance is assigned to all disciples, then and now. Hear God's word, believe and follow Christ's teachings, and abundance will follow. Now, does that mean that we're all going to become rich? No. Does that mean I'm preaching the prosperity gospel? Absolutely not. In fact, the original disciples left everything. They left everything to follow Christ. They left their businesses, their families, their communities, everything to follow Jesus so that they can fish for people, so that they can restore their lives. When we decide to follow Jesus be, or be disciples and fish for people, we are filled with God's Holy Spirit, the ultimate gift of grace. It means that God's love to the Holy Spirit will abundantly be given and received, received graciously by the sinner disciple that is called by God. We are disciples of Christ. We are called, called to follow, called to fish, called to share. Share in God's love, in God's forgiveness, and in God's eternal care. And while we, while we receive so much from God, we are expected to also care for God's children, God's people, God's creation on this earth. We are to share our love, our possessions, our abilities, and our time for those who need help. For God's children, for all people. This is what it means to be a disciple of Christ it means that, yes, we give, we might lend, we feed the hungry, we clothe the naked, we give hospitality to the homeless. That is how we fish for people, capturing them alive and restoring them to life, life in Christ, life eternal, life with God, life following Christ teachings. Once upon a time in a small fishing village in Hawaii, there lived a wise fisherman named Will and a foolish fisherman named Phil. 
Every morning, Will and Phil headed for their favorite fishing spot, hoping to catch fish. There was a time when there were many fish to catch, but recently they couldn't catch a thing, single fish. So every day, Will and Phil headed home with their empty nets, and this certainly did not make Phil's greedy wife, Jill, very happy. One day, a mysterious fish swam into Will's favorite fishing spot. It was a magic onaga, and she taught Will how to become a wise fisherman. And she told him this. She said, if you wish to fish, remember this. These rules that you must heed. Take only what you truly need, and don't give in to greed because to reproduce the fish must grow. So let the small fish go. And by caring for the sea, the sea will care for you and me. If you heed these rules and don't forget, you will never be without fish in your nets. And just as mysteriously as the magic Onaga appeared, she soon disappeared into the sea. And from that day on, Will did as the magic Onaga asked, and just as she promised, his net was always filled with fish. When Jill saw all the fishes Will had caught, she sent Phil to ask Will his secret to catching all these fish. And of course, then Will explained his story to Phil about the magic Onaga. Phil didn't believe him, though. And when the, suddenly the magic Onaga appeared once again, and she taught Phil the same rules to catching fish. Phil took the magic Onaga's words to heart and followed her rules. And just as she promised, every day his net was filled with fish, just like Will's. Every day, Will and Phil were sure to take only the fish they needed and always release the small fish. And by doing so, they always had many fish to catch. Of course, no one was happier than Phil's greedy wife, Jill, who spent all the money as quickly as she could get it. And in fact, she was so pleased that one day she joined Phil to his favorite fishing spot to see how he was able to catch so many fish. Phil began fishing as he always did, releasing the small fish and those he didn't need. And Jill, being the greedy wife that she was, did not approve and demanded that he take every fish that every fish they could catch. Phil tried to explain what the magic Onaga had taught him, but Jill wouldn't hear such nonsense. And so Phil, being the foolish fisherman that he was, finally gave in to his greedy wife, Jill, and against the warning of the magic Onaga, they took all the fish they could get, and eventually, and even the really small ones too. At first, they didn't notice it, but, by the, but as time went by, there were less and less fish, until one day there weren't any fish left at all. As Phil and Jill looked upon their empty net, the magic Onaga appeared once more and told them, well, I see you gave in to your greed, taking much more than you need. Populations could not grow since you did not let the small fish go. If you do not care for the precious sea, then how will it care for you and me? My simple rule, you did forget. Your reward is an empty net. And because they did not listen to the advice of the magic Onaga, Phil was forced to sell everything they had, and all they were left with was an empty net. While Will, the wise fisherman, always did as the magic Onaga instructed. So he was rewarded with a net full of fish every day for the rest of his life. And the story of the fisherman and the magic fish was passed along to fishermen as a reminder of what can happen when we forget that we should take only what we need. Let small fish go so they can grow to reproduce and to always care for the sea. May we be satisfied with what God provides. May we care for the small fish all around us. May we only take what we truly need and share the rest with others. Amen. Let us continue with our hymn of response, Where He Leads Me, on the walls and on your screens.
judgment. I will go with you through judgment. Please be seated. <clears throat> this is a time of our service when I remind you to take notes of the people mentioned in our joys and concerns and join your list today with the one from last week and place it on your refrigerator, on your nightstand, or on your coffee table, anywhere that will remind you to share God's love with others through your prayers. This is a vital ministry here at Trinity and one that has had some amazing results. Today, I'd like to start with uh, Sandy Strubinger, who is asking for prayers for her grandson, Bailey, who broke his jaw in five places and needed a seven-hour surgery to repair it. Apparently, a hydraulic line came loose and hit him in the face. Um, had it hit him in the head or in the chest, he probably wouldn't be with us today. But he is now home and is checking with his doctor weekly to make sure that he's healing properly. He has plates and wires and all that right now. But So please, keep him in your prayers for continued healing, comfort, and strength. A friend of ours named Josie Sabella, who was a, who was a member of uh, Trinity UCC in Copley, my former pastorate, and who we've prayed for in the past, um, was once again experiencing severe abdominal pain and was admitted to the hospital down in Florida. Please keep Josie in your prayers for comfort, pain relief, and strength to get through this latest flare-up. Ruth Ann Lemons, uh, text me and let me know about Barry. Oh, uh, how's Barry doing? He's now out of ICU. He's in room 465. Uh, should you want to call him and with uh, warm wishes for a quick recovery? Because you've got to remember GMC is limiting visitors to only one family member at this time. Yes? And he just got moved to Hell South. So yes, we figured that was my next thing. I was going to say, more than likely he's going to get rehabilitation therapy. So apparently he's doing well enough that he's already been moved to Hell South. Fantastic. So Barry is now at Hell South. So you can forget about room 465. Uh, um, so he will be, he is receiving physical therapy and hopefully he'll be back with us very soon. So please keep Barry in your prayers for continued healing, comfort, and strength. Sue Fox is asking us to pray for her daughter, Heather's friend, Don, Donnell, who passed away this week. We prayed for Donnell in the past when she had her leg amputated. Please keep Heather and Donnell's family, family in your prayers for comfort, peace, and God's embrace during this very difficult time. And Les Wolf has asked us to pray for Jane Wolf, his wife, because she's experiencing some health issues that's causing quite a bit of pain. So please keep Jane in your prayers for pain relief as well, for comfort and peace. And as always, I remind you to send in your joys or concerns to us through email, text, or by phone, and we'll be sure to include them in our next service. So now, let us pray. God, whose word calls us to take risks and whose revelations in Jesus Christ gives us confidence to try again when we have failed, appear to us now as we listen to the scriptures and lift our eyes to see your face. Grant that we may feel your presence and discern your will. Equip us to respond with confidence, faithfulness, to work to the work you give us to do. We want to go where you send us and to live up to where, what you expect of us. Open your people to live together as you intend 
as today we ask mindfully that you watch over and comfort our friends in Christ, such as our homebound, those in life care centers, those on our prayer list, as well as those named here today. And we celebrate with you the saints of this church that serve your people with such love. Now in a moment of silence, we ask that you hear those prayers that are too private to speak out loud. Lord, hear our prayers. May we keep these special people in our minds and in our hearts and in our prayers as we go through this next week. And let us pray the prayer that Christ has taught us using debts and debtors. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. When we are genu genuinely thankful for the steadfast love and faithfulness of God, we are eager to share this bounty. When we are truly discern the grace of God, we want others to experience it too. Christ calls us to reach out to our sisters and brothers with the good news of God's reign. Our offerings help to take God's word to the world. So therefore, let us consider going to the church's website at www.trinityreformed.org and present your offerings to God online or by sending in your church envelopes as best as you are able. Those who are here in person can drop their offering in the basket at the rear of the sanctuary. Please join me in the prayer of dedication found on the walls and on your screens. Your voice, O oh God, we have heard. Your presence has moved us to respond. Send us where you want us to go. Use the resources we dedicate here to empower others to witness to your love and care. Fill our lives with thanksgiving. Fill our days with purpose. We rededicate ourselves to work and worship that express our profound gratitude for life and all its opportunities. Amen. Let us now celebrate the Lord's Supper. All are welcome at this table. You need not be a member of Trinity Reformed UCC to partake in the elements. Here we also allow children to partake, partake in communion with the permission of their parents. For those online, we ask that you have your bread, cracker, or wafer available, and your juice or wine prepared as well. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. You who come to me shall not hunger. You who believe in me shall never thirst. Therefore, this table is for all who wish to know the presence of Christ and to share in the community of God's people. In the presence of all who hunger for spiritual food, we come to this table to know the risen Christ in the sharing of this life-giving meal. God be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to God. Let us give thanks to God most high. It's right to give God thanks and praise. We rejoice in Jesus Christ, your son, our savior, who was born of your servant Mary and shared the joys and sorrows of life as we know it. We celebrate Christ's life. We remember Christ's death and we rejoice in Christ's resurrection. We take courage in the abiding presence of your Holy Spirit in our midst and with all the prophets, martyrs, and saints and all the company of heaven, we glorify your holy name.
Please be seated. <clears throat> now, as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body. Jesus then took the cup, and after giving thanks, gave it to the disciples, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured for many for the forgiveness of sins. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Bless this bread and bless this fruit of the vine. Bless us in our eating and drinking at this table, that our eyes may be opened and we may recognize the risen Christ in our midst and in one another. In the strength Christ gives us, we offer ourselves to you, eternal God, and give thanks that you have called us to serve you. Amen. Through the broken bread, we participate in the body of Christ. And through the cup of blessing, we participate in the new life Christ gives. Come, for all things are ready. Prepackaged juice and wafer cups have been distributed uh, to those in the sanctuary. If you need some, they are in the back of the sanctuary if you had, didn't get one. Uh, and at this time, please open your bread. Please take your bread, hold it up. The body of Christ broken for you, take and eat. And now turn over and take your juice. Raise it up. The blood of Christ shed for you, take and drink. We give thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Jesus Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world with courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of your most Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, if you please join me in the blessing and commission found on the walls and on your screens. God has touched us amid our pain and fears. We have been comforted and blessed. We have felt a healing, restoring presence. God is leading us through troubled times. God has cleansed us from the sins that destroy us. Our guilt is lifted from us and taken away. We give thanks and sing praise to God. We have received blessings in abundance. Who will witness to the grace of God? who will go out to serve in Christ's name. Here we are, ready to be sent into the world. We will go where God directs to share good news. Amen. Now hear this pastoral benediction. God provides that which we need, but not always what we want. Too often we confuse these two and see things we want as things we really need. And that contributes to our feeling of insecurity with that which we already have, while others go without. May you be able to tell the difference between want and need and share your excess with those who have none. Amen. Let us conclude our service with our closing hymn, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus, on the walls and on your screens. Oh, 
Go in peace. Thank you.